Yeah, I think a lot of us enjoy watching those programs on TV called Storage Hunters, where uh, people buy a locked storage cabinet. Not sure what's actually in there. And it's quite interesting to see what they discover. Well, I could do a similar sort of situation here, actually, because uh, this is my garage. Um, when we moved here, almost 10 years ago exactly now, we had lots of boxes in here rather than the cars. And um, eventually all those boxes got emptied. And the places, things put in the right places in the house. But there was one exception. One wooden box that came from our old house. Which has always been in a rather awkward position to get to in the garage. That's it in between the car and then the other, a rather large toolbox. It's got lots of heavy tools in it. Underneath you see that pink box. Years ago, I used to keep my mechanical pieces in. That's no longer the case, but it has got things in there from our old house which we never got around to unpacking here. So I'm going to move the car out and move that heavy box and discover what's in there. While I'm here, I suppose, let me just have a quick look at this display panel. We were quite lucky in this garage because uh, it used to be the sales office for the houses in this little corner. There are 30 houses here. And um, it's been finished to a very good degree, interior walls. There's some toilet in the corner over there. Okay, well. After I've moved the car, we'll see what's in that box. See, we've been here in this address now for 10 years. It's a fitting time to do it, I think, and see what we discover. First thing to do is get this large toolbox off the door. Let's just check if you're actually getting a good view of that. That's, uh, yes, that's okay. Right, what's this paperwork then? Ah, right. Some uh, scoop of display posters. Yeah. I bought this all from Italy at one time. Yeah, that's good. I wonder where I can find this space to display them now. This is Tracy. What was this? Oh, there's another new poster. Oh, yes, a hyper poster. Yeah. Memories, eh? What's the time I have one of those? I'm not sure how much of a deal you have on that. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a bit too close, that's fine. Well, I'm going another copy of that con called uh, Classic Photograph as it flew over the suspension bridge in Bristol. Uh, another copy of this in my in the box room indoors. Okay, that's that. Now then, what do I see next? <laughs> Memories, eh? I can see here a digital clock. This is a wedding present from the friends at work. Back in those days, 1967, digital clock was a new idea. Rather fancy the idea of seeing the time digitally. And here's an old lamp that used to be on my parents' television. Because it was always thought it wasn't very good just to watch the television, black and white television screen. We had to have a light on the top to soften the, the, 
the colouring, the brightness of the screen. The wiring of this is a bit trapped underneath. in this box here. I have no idea if it doesn't bring back any memories. Let's see what's in this big black box. Oh, it was a tanker for something that, uh, what is it, I won at something. Lambretta Super Show, first class. You need dates on that. Oh, 1995, yeah. That's a memory. In this guy, just again, this. When I was growing up, one of the hobbies that we boys had was playing with marbles. And this is a bag of my marbles. Still survived all these years. In a grey sack. I used to swap them. I remember I had a very special one once and uh, walking to school one day uh, I walked by a house where the railings had been cut off uh, during the war because they wanted it for scrap metal and there was just like the tube of the railing sticking up flush with the surface and I thought, well I wonder if my best marble will fit in there of course I dropped it in the tube and I never could get it out again <laughs> I often used to walk by there and see my marble stuck in this tube. <laughs> now here there's a box of candles. Now how come? Is it just candles? They're really big candles. Don't remember the history of them. Anyway, if I get a power cut. As in fact we had this week, we had a quick blip of the power and all the clocks had to be reset afterwards. Candles. Well, it's a momentum of one of our first holidays as a married couple. In fact it was before we were married, was it? Now there's a point. This was, it was to Holland and uh, we had this on our mantelpiece for years. <laughs> Lovely photograph, the tulips we saw there. I can see down here something that was rather unusual, it's not simply very satisfactory. I remember seeing this in a toy shop window when I was growing up, and it offered a telephone facility. I thought, oh, wonderful. Perhaps I can uh, use that to ring indoors from the garage or something weird. All it was really, if I can open it, if it's still the same. Yeah, it was a couple of little bats with like a little membrane there, oh, which I think is perished now. Yeah, it's broken. But you, you had to have the string, which is wrapped around the handle, taut. And you could make the, the membrane vibrate by speaking to it. As long as the string was taut all the time, uh, you could hear it's the length of the string away. <laughs> don't know what year this is. Must be even back to the 1940s. Nope, still survived all this time. Yeah, here's a money box. <laughs> oh, it's got some money in it. This was made for me as when I was a boy, when my father, who was um, he, a shipwright in the dockyard, and he could do things with wood. Yeah, that's one of the few survivors of what my father made for me. It's tempting to find out what's in there. Anyway, might look into that later. Now here is a camera box. Yeah, one of my first, not one of my first, one of my ancient cameras anyway. I think it's empty. Oh, what's a spare battery for it? Yeah, that's always there's a spare battery for a camera which is uh, long gone. 
it says on the battery, flat. I think I must have just kept this to know what I had to get to from, oh, it says new September 2001. Huh? Just so I knew what I had to get next time I wanted a battery for the camera. It's a bit ancient history. This was a clock that was um, in our kitchen as I was growing up. The calico clock. Does it wind up? One out there. Oh, yeah. One's up there. A tick. Huh. Yeah, this was on the kitchen dresser all the years I was growing up. Made by Ingersoll. Not a very clear dial. But that certainly brings back memories. Yeah. Now I can see some large speakers here. Yes, AOS speakers. Yeah. Now these were part of a bigger music system. This used to clamp on either side of the main unit. But that, I think I had a problem. I thought, well, rather than check the speakers away, they might come in useful sometime. It's the same was quite good. Eight the speakers. I've not really found a need for them since, but it seems a shame to throw them away if they were in working order. There's the second one. Hmm. Here's a stand from a model of an American Pacific locomotive I once made. And now I've got Big Boy 4884. Now that's purely the stand. I wonder what will happen to the model. Don't know. <laughs> Here's the pinger timer my mother always used to use for her baking. She was a good cook. She used to make real cornish pasties. This used to make a little rattling noise. But I think... Oh, it's the other way. It's a bit reluctant. Well, that used to count its way down. There we go. It's a bit like just a little bit of persuasion. That always meant that something was cooking in the oven. When we got to the end, in a minute and do a little quick ping. Now the things are ready. <laughs> Here's a souvenir of the only time I ever went to Moscow. It's not often that people get the chance to go to Moscow, but I did in the early 60s. And this is a model of a big ornament they have there, a big um, monument rather. <sighs> Significant of this, of the space, oh there goes the pinger, of the space achievements the Russians have had. And it was a neon, that used, this used to light up. Yeah, you know, I had to put on an English plug, of course, because the Russian plug is nothing like this. In fact, none of the English plugs look like this now anyway. <laughs> Colour-coded. So I might put an ordinary 13 amp plug top on that and see if that still works. Mm. So you've got some memories in here. Nothing very useful. Oh, it's funny, I, I, I thought of something that was probably in this box, and I discovered it isn't, and that was a very nice JVC uh, DVD player we had. I always assumed it must be in this box, but it's not, so I wonder what happened to that. Oh, I'm sad that's not in there. That was nice, it had a, a square front panel that used to change colour. In a, in a kind of a random session, sometimes clued into the music. Oh, that's not there. 
And over here, I'm opening up a slide ruling in the case that my father made for it. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, he made this. Huh. That's before the days of calculators, of course. But I used that in all the exams that I set at school. And since, I suppose, in college. Yeah. Interesting. Here's a little pocket solitaire. Now I don't remember where that came from. You've got little pegs in there which you play the game of solitaire if you know how to do it. And, oops, careful I'm losing these little things. Anyways, it's all complete apart from the one that's fallen on the floor. I don't remember the history of this or even that we had such a thing. You know, are the passage of time. Pick up that little pack before it's lost. Mm. Here's our money box. <coughs> Don't know why I decided to keep that pretty tatty state, nothing in it. That was probably my first money box I ever had to put money in. Hmm. And finally, this is something I thought well, I would find in here. This was a retirement present. When I left out of the space, which is a little bit unusual. There's all sorts of uh, roller bearings, um, all bearings in there, and it is a clock. Um, the way it operated was, you could read the time from these different scales depending on where a roller bearing had got to. <laughs> it's quite fascinating because every minute or so, um, a, a ball bearing would be lifted up and go down through all these various channels and end up in the right place. And uh, when I was at, at work, I ended up with an inspection stamp. And there's a typical example at the bottom. So I've got a date of the 11th of February, 1987. That must have been when I retired then. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, I should look forward to seeing and hearing that one operating. Because when it operates, you hear the ball bearings running down the the various channels. I think it'll be unpopular in the lounge, but I know a good place in the loft where that one will, will go. Oh, well, one or two surprises. There's the kicks this there. Yeah. Hmm, right, and there's another thing I remember too. I used to have a amateur radio receiver as I uh, once took my uh, examinations in radio amateur work. But that's not in the box, so that's two things I th always were expecting to find in there. Which aren't. Now, whatever happened to them? Well, sadly, they're not in that box, but I found it interesting to discover what is in there. I must pass a few minutes of time for you too.